Hey guys, beautiful day, blue skies, heading out for a fly. But first, got the um, interior completed on the cruiser, um, laid up with the upholstery. Fantastic job, really happy, so hope you enjoy this one. Okay, new movie, here we go. Um, working on the panel, waiting for some spares to come in, and some thicker wire. Um, sort of running out of options there. I've added a avionics bus since last um, video. I'm just working out. I think I'm going to go the long way around to join these two up via a circuit breaker and a switch. So that's the avionics side of it. Got my roller carpet. I'm going to start getting ready to line this section with carpet. So I think I've found well, what I'm going to do. Back to the plans. Find the baggage back. And then if you flick to the um, the actual plan to a scratch build, it gives you the dimensions. So that'll be a, a rough start. Well, pretty accurate to be honest, um, because it's all CNC machined and folded. Um, I'm going to do my paper templates off this, and then offer it up to the airframe. So I've got my brown roll of brown paper. I'll copy the plans, offer it up to the airframe, and then we'll cut some carpet. Okay, so next skill, let's roll out the carpet. Didn't go with the red carpet, just gone with the charcoal. Um, yeah, not sure how this is going to turn out. So, cutting out my blank, measured up the rear baggage wall. So in the aircraft here, I'm going to start with that piece up there. My over overlap or join will be at the base there. So my plan is to do sort of smaller pieces without being too many smaller pieces. Obviously you wouldn't want to join here. So from there we'll cascade each side of the glove box if you like down to another join here. Um, but I'll try with that back piece first. I've started with a um, test piece of my double sided tape. Good 3M stuff. Little test piece. Seems to be um, well it works pretty well. The material I have got, brand new blade obviously in the exacto knife, big table is really coming in handy. Draw square lines on the table or use the edge of the table just to square it up. Um, the back wall there is a bit of a trapezium shape. Um, I did have them, well they're here, marked out exactly in the plans. Um, so I've allowed myself about 20mm over. I find with this type of job rather than measure, just mark it. So I'll offer it up, mark it, bring it back out, cut it, and we'll see how we go. I've got three metres of this material, I didn't realise it was, so it's two metres wide. This is probably the biggest piece, I've just cut, just cut this section away. So I've got a rough square, uh, but you can see as I pulled that, you've got to be careful when you cut it, to cut a straight line, if it's got a woof in it like that, obviously your line won't be straight when it all flattens out or irons out but we'll persevere another new skill laying carpet let's go all right just me mucking around with this get in here I'm trying to get that carpet spot on and it's a bit like cue cue the Benny Hill music I finally got this laid down uh, I'm about a quarter of an inch too short for some reason. So, you might have to use this piece as a template and cut another one. And then this piece hopefully will do some smaller parts. But, trying to uh, hang that, I think the sticky tape is the way to go, the masking tape. And then work it up. I don't know how I'm going to tape it on just yet. Uh, but it's not easy. I'm not enjoying this part. The finish should be great. But, probably should have been done when I had the fuselage off. But we'll persevere. 
So just marking out, it got the better of me. I need about an extra 10 mil at the top. So marking out another one. I probably need chalk. Probably the dressmakers use chalk. I might raid my daughter's box. But I'm using masking tape. Works alright at the moment. And a little trick I've been doing. Just got some L angle. Just to, um, you've got to sort of line the threads back up. Just get it to sit all flush. So sort of rake the material. Um, that way, after each cut, the material can bunch up. So I'm just sort of smoothing it back out and ironing it. I get cold iron or something, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's what's working for me so far. Now that I'm experienced with this, been going for 30 minutes now. So I'm an experienced carpet layer. Okay. I think I've got that to where I'm happy with it. It's just a little bit oversized, which I reckon I can touch the edges in. And um, I'll let you, let you know on a little secret what I used, but don't tell anyone. Blue tack. So I was mucking around with tape, you probably saw there for a bit. Um, the tape's hopeless. Blue, blue tack, because you can put it on and you can actually roll it a bit, like still move it to get it in the right spot. Um, now I'm going to use some 3M double sided tape, see how we go. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but I can obviously, you know, I could start in one corner and now because that's fixed at the top, well that'll probably drop down while I'm filming, um, that should well, will drop back into the exact spot. And I went to the trouble of this is the second piece I've cut, the other one was about 10 mil too, too short. Um, gives me a nice overlap at the bottom, so I'll get a proper rather than rather than a butt join. Um, I think I'll just overlap by a bit. So I'm never gonna, it's not gonna split and you get that shiny, eh, look at me type of um, type of gap. Top's nice. Happy with that. Okay, puffing a bit. But the first bit of carpet has gone in and I've got to give myself a pat on the back. Really, really happy with that. Crisp lines. It's in my double sided tape. We'll see how it hangs up. It holds up to the 30 degree or 35 degrees in Australia. Probably 40 degrees in the cockpit here. Um, but yeah, if it does come off, I'll use a spray adhesive, I think, down the track. But I've used this uh, 3M double-sided tape. Um, extra strong. I've got the, um, using this uh, scraper, if you like. So I come aboard. But I've, I've just used this scraper, and it's surprising how much you can actually, in these corners, um, this scraper actually came with a roll of carbon fibre vinyl but with the spatula or a sharp edge without taking the paint off the fuselage you just um, bounce it along and tuck the edge in and that's turned out fantastic really happy with that perfect edge all tucked in nicely do another bit. So the way I'm uh, doing the carpet, so I've, first of all I use the masking tape to get it where I want it to, fold it back. So I've, I've taped half, as you can see I can fold this back. Now I lay some more tape and then that should just boom right into position um, and go where it wants to. 
going well. Have a look at this. This has turned out fantastic. Um, it's taken me probably uh, three hours, I guess. Um, but I've got from the back wall down to where your bum would be, all covered in carpet. And looks very professional, very neat. And honestly, I can't fault it at this stage. I use double-sided tape, so time will tell how long. I might come out here tomorrow when it's all fallen down. But now that it's in place and held with double-sided tape, if I get some dog ears and that later on, I'll use contact cement or something like that. I just didn't want to spray that, I think it's 3M77 adhesive. Um, it'd mean masking up and everything like that on my nice paint job inside here. So I've used double-sided tape. Obviously the horizontal surfaces should be okay unless it gets a bit funky in the back seat. Um, but the vertical on the back wall, time will tell on that. So let's have a look at this. So I've got these pieces cut. However, I, um, I'm going to wait till I install my seats. The seats are actually getting done professionally at the upholsterers. Although, I may very well open an upholstery shop now after doing this. Only kidding. Um, so the carpet inlays. Really happy. Just perfect all the way around. Tuck the edges in. Took me a while. I'm not sure if you've seen in other parts of the video, but I use masking tape as my, I know you can use white china graph or something, but I was sort of worried about how I'd get it off. Um, I use masking tape onto the carpet and I've got a join across there. This piece rolls down, another join across there and flows down to here and just overlap my joins by about 10 mil and works really well just stuffing that edge, um, get the carpet in there and I'm just going to rivet straight through the carpet. This piece will be riveted on eventually once I've done all my inspections. be one of the last things to get riveted on and the front panel as well. There is talk of anchor nuts but you really don't need everyday access into that centre section once it's um, serviceable and signed up. So that's where we're at. Really happy. Alright, last piece of carpet for now, or upholstery. I just started marking it out. I cheated a bit with the texture here. You've got to put a few nicks in. This is the seat pan, just for the stringers and the formers, just tiny little nicks. Um, what I've sort of worked out, I think I mentioned it before, before you cut, just make sure you flatten it out, because the edge can be sort of, I don't know, somehow it bunches up, and then it's not square. So if you flatten it back out, Gives you the true sort of reading, I guess. Being a bit pedantic, but then you get a nice straight edge or whatever sort of shape you need. Um, and I've just cut for my conduit on the other side there. Um, and working it in. Now these pieces won't... Uh, I'm going to leave these pieces out until I fit the seat, but as soon as I've got the tools out, I'm just finishing that last piece and we're looking good. Okay, Aussie built. Zena CH750 interior basically complete or well, the interior carpet, the upholstery looking good uh, like I said the two seat pans um, yeah, it looks a bit rough, that's not tucked in yet these are just sitting in there whereas this is all stuck down stuck down with double sided tape all the way up to the top looking fantastic and cut out the um, left hand side, the pilot seat as well that'll, that'll all tuck in nicely, it's just flopping around there at the moment so once I get my seats mounted in um, drill the 6 holes for the seat I might drill 12 holes, so I've got a couple of positions there if I need to and fit the seats or fit the carpet then fit the seats back in so these will go on the shelf uh, until such time as the seats are actually getting professionally upholstered so should turn out nice. There's one thing too, areas like um, down under there, it's pretty easy to drop your standards but I sort of think you know keep your standards up even though you can't see some of those corners yeah just keep the standards up and that's just turned out really well as you can tell I'm pretty happy with that. Alright guys thanks for watching that one I um, haven't got a really good segue to you know do the carpet and then go on to something else 
Um, so I think I might wrap that video up there. But really happy. Um, I was nervous at first, you know, attempting the carpet. Um, I don't know, people might laugh at me, but years and years of RC model aircraft, covering model aircraft and that sort of thing, um, that paid dividend. People have asked me um, via message, etc., does my aero modelling help with building a full size aircraft? And that's one instance where it definitely did. Um, just doing all the nice edges and that sort of thing. So, a um, couple of tips there. I think I highlighted a few tips. Um, but the other one too, I went through about 20 X-Acto knife blades. Basically every cut was a new blade. Um, you can feel it start to tear. The fabric I used was um, very uh, limp, if you like. So it drapes like a tea towel over your hand. Um, and that helped as well. So, really happy with that. Learn a new skill. Um, at the start, I thought I should just you know, hire someone to get in here and do it properly because I wanted it to look fantastic. I'm only worried about getting the edges perfect because I've got the different colours, the two-tone grey. Um, well, it's, well it's, I've got charcoal, I think it's like a dove grey that I've got there with the carbon fibre, uh, vinyl. Because um, you've got that contrast there, it's very easy to get the edge of the, the stuff to sort of look really gawky. Um, but the other trick with that um, spatula, um, or the scraper, I've got it just here. And with this guy or something similar, just cut it about three mil oversize and just jam it down in the side there. Um, that's just turned out really good. So, really happy with that. So this box of stuff arrived from um, Stein Air, all my electronics. Um, took a while. We're getting towards the end of September now. I think it's around the 20. I'll tell you. It's the 28th of September. Um, so 16th of August, this box was in uh, Fairbolt, Minnesota, I think that is. Went to uh, Chicago, from Chicago um, International, sorry, Chicago to San Francisco, over to Sydney, Australia, back to Chicago, back to Los Angeles, or up to Los Angeles, across to Los Angeles, back to Sydney, and now finally to Australia. So I've got a well-traveled little box here, so I'm going to move on with some avionics. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one.